complete the sentence. Every corner starts with the breaking zone. Being able to consistently, lap after lap, corner after corner, repeat certain braking patterns that are adequate for that corner and car are the number one key to producing fast lap times. If you're not able to do this, then most likely you're going to be too fast into the corner or too slow. Both is going to alter the car's attitude and make it much harder to tap into the actual limit of the car. For a long time in sim racing, we were using travel based pedals that were just measuring the distance of how far you were pressing the pedal and translating that into a signal uh, between 0 to 100% on the PC. But we have moved on from that since quite some time and it's ever more common to use load cell pedals that are measuring one way or another pressure or uh, a certain force that you're putting onto the pedal and translating that into an electric signal. The advantage is, or rather the disadvantage of the travel based pedals is that humans are not particularly good in judging distances, how far they're moving their foot, for example. We are much better judging how hard we press something, how much pressure we inflict onto something, and therefore load cell pedals offer a much better way in sim racing to control the braking, also because it's much more in line with what happens in the real car. However, compared to a travel based pedal, load cell pedals usually have a lot of options that you can adjust to recreate the brake feeling that you desire or that a game requires. So today we're going to check all the various settings that a load cell pedal offers. Thankfully, I have the Simicube Active Pedal available, which allows me to virtually recreate every or any pedal I can think of. So this is going to become super handy to actually do this video that I was thinking of a long time, but couldn't actually do because I would have to physically change the brake pedal for everything I wanted to show. So let's get into it. The first thing that is important to understand is that there are settings that are going to affect the travel that the pedal has available. And there are settings that are going to affect the force needed to create a certain percentage of input in the game. The most important lesson here is to treat them separately. So let me walk you through and I'll try to explain as good as I can what the available options are, what they actually do to the pedal feel, and how you adjust it to your liking. So let's start here. If I press the pedal very hard, so I'm reaching the 100% input value, this is how it's configured. I will need something like 80.6 kilogram to reach the 100% input value here. At the same time, you can see, I do not need a lot of travel for that, for example, which is what I set separately here. How this usually translates to anything that is not an active pedal is the size of the elastomer, right? So this would be the rubber pieces that you put uh, behind the pedal that are going to get squashed the harder you press the pedal. So if you take a very huge, very soft elastomer, you're going to have a pedal that behaves like this. Please take note, I did not change the maximum force required for 100% input. So if I press the pedal now, I will still need 80.6 kilograms to reach the 100% input value in the game, but you can see the pedal is traveling a much bigger distance now. Just going back to the default setting, or just very low, you can see now the pedal barely moves, and I still need to press the 80 kilograms. I can even go as far as kind of in real time, change the elastomer, and increase the distance while still having the same forces there. Of course, I can also adjust the required force to reach 100% value in the game. For example, I can go down. Now I will only need the 40 kilos to reach 100%, but you can see the travel of the pedal is still the same, and I can just have as much of a stiff pedal to just kind of produce 40 kilos or 170 kilos. And the pedal does not move differently, no matter how small the forces that I require to reach the 100% input. So I just want to highlight here that you need to treat these things independently. And now we can go into the little more detailed options available. Let's talk about the preload next, which 
usually on all other pedals that are not active pedals, will be some sort of a spring that you can pre-compress to make it stiffer or you put a different spring, for example, to create a preload force, which is the minimum force needed um, to move the pedal at all. On the active pedal, you have the option to kind of use infinite amount of springs, so to say. And the yeah, kind of lowest preload, of course, would be zero kilos. So anything that is above zero kilos is going to move the pedal. And you can see that it's very, very light now. And one kilo is already going to move the pedal quite a bit. Ignore the percentage input because that is a different dial, which is defining the lower dead zone until we actually have an input in the game. So this is the preload at zero. So the pedal moves with very little force available. Let's go to the other extreme, put a preload of 40 kilos, which means now I need to press 40 kilos before the pedal starts moving at all. There you go, right? 35, 30, 38, nothing happens. 40, the pedal moves. Okay, so this is what the preload spring does. Of course, you might not have as detailed control on whatever pedal set you have. Um, as you have on the active pedal, but in principle, this is what the preload spring does. The next thing we have to take a look at is the lower dead zone, meaning the minimum amount of force that is going to result in an input on the PC or in the game. This is something you would do in the calibration of your pedal. Some, some will have a software, some just use DI view. In um, Timmy Cube's case, we just have this very intuitive software here. And this is going to define the minimum amount of force here that I need to create a percentage input in the game. So you can see I have the preload at five kilograms. So somewhere here, nothing happens. At five kilograms, the pedal is going to start to move, but we are still not pressing enough kilos to reach the minimum threshold to produce a game input which is 9.9 .9 right now. And so let's increase the kilos with my left foot. Now we have nine, nine and a half, 9.9, .9, and there are 10. There's the threshold when we start creating an input for the game that will be actually recognized. And we can just say, well, this dead zone, we want this to be much, much, much higher, let's say 40 kilograms. So I have a lot of pedal to press, a lot of kilos to produce before any input will be recognized by the game. So now it's gonna be 40, we go over the threshold, and then finally, halfway through the pedal kilogram range, and also way further through the travel range, we're finally going to get an input towards the game. This is what the lower dead zone does. You can also define a dead zone at the top, which is something people typically have done on iRacing. I don't know if it's a thing these days. Um, so you could just define, hey, actually the biggest input I want to send to the PC or the biggest signal the PC is supposed to produce is 80%. So we can adjust that curve. And now if we go up and we produce our 80 kilograms, you will see even if I press more than 90 kilos or, or 100 if I can take that, you see the highest input we'll see on the PC in the game is 80%. So that is the upper level dead zone. So the question now, of course, is what is the correct setting for you specifically? Um, what we need to figure out now is what is what is the actual situation that you're in? What is what is the rig that you're having or what is the seat situation that you have? How strong are you in general? Are you like a bodybuilder? Then maybe 40 kilograms are way too easy for you. Or if you're like a uh, super weak 50 60 kilogram person then it's much more likely you will be completely overwhelmed with pressing 60 70 80 kilos consistently for example it also depends a bit what your preference is in terms of braking are you an ankle breaker or just using the ankle or are you moving your entire leg and calf and are you able to produce only a small force with your ankle or are you going to create bigger forces using your entire motion chain from foot to knee to hip then also important would be the angle that you actually have in the rig so if your seat is being way above the pedals and you're pressing down then this is going to change a bit how much force you will be able to put before you 
kind of push yourself upwards. Or if you are sitting very uh, horizontal in the rig, then maybe it's just going to press you into the seat. Or if, the, if you have a formula style position, then you'll have the feet above your butt, which is going to result in, well, a different amount of force that you are comfortably pressing without your body weight having any impact on it. The last thing we need to think about is to find a balance between fidelity. So a huge amount of force is going to give us a huge range to be precise in or how fatigued we are going to be and how often we actually have to press the pedal over the course of a race distance. If you have to press the pedal for hundred kilos to reach your braking input for I don't know, a couple thousand times throughout the race, you are going to get tired most likely. But at the same time, if you only press 10 kilograms, you won't have the precision. So it's all about finding that middle ground that really works for you. So how does the amount of force translate to fidelity? Just let's just take the example of the thing that we have right in front of me, which is the 80 kilograms. And you can see if I decide to, okay, let's go to 50%, I can hold the brake there. It's going to fluctuate a bit, of course. I'm never perfect. I can say, well, let's go to 25 and hold it there for a bit or go back up to 80. That's the braking input we need right now. And then we are going to hold it there. Now, if we, let's go extreme here just to highlight the issue. If we go very low with the forces, then it is going to be a very small range in which we want to be precise. So 100% of course is easy, 0% is easy, but let's say 50%. It takes the time to find, and even though I'm holding completely still, I'm not doing anything. The signal is fluctuating up and down by a good 5 to 10% or something. So it's very hard to be precise here. And if I decide now to just break 30 or 20%, uh, yeah, that's not very easy to hit there. On the other hand, if we go way too high, then we might not be able to produce the correct amount of force to actually slow down the car most efficiently. And maybe even throughout a braking zone, if we're driving slower cars with weak brakes or so, we're braking for 10, 15 seconds, well, it's probably a stretch of five to 10 seconds, then maybe you actually get weaker throughout the braking zone. And then you will not be able to press the full amount of pressure for a long amount of time. Let alone, you will be able to do this thousand times throughout the race distance you'll get weaker and weaker and weaker and at some point throughout the race you'll not be able to break efficiently enough at all for me the sweet spot is somewhere around the 70 to 80 kilos depends a bit on the game again how long the braking distances are it's quite easy to press 80 kilos for three four seconds in a hard braking zone but if you're driving slower cars road cars for example and you have to start braking at the 250 300 meter board then the braking zones are going to last quite a bit longer and it's going to be more exhausting to hold the pedal at 80 kilos so for me the compromise here for gt3s is kind of have that fidelity, fidelity, being able to reach 100% comfortably, lap after lap, corner after corner, but quickly, usually we're going into the trail braking and we're going lower pressure and I want to have that precision there. So this is kind of the sweet spot for me, but that doesn't mean you have the same. I do quite a lot of sim racing. My leg, even though super thin, is quite strong from years of sim racing. Um, and it might be different for you. Also, please, 80 kilograms here on the SimuQ pedal don't necessarily translate to 80 kilograms on a different pedal. This is merely the force that is acting on the load cell, not necessarily the force you are pressing at the pedal plate here uh, on the sole of your foot. The same compromise is kind of needed on the travel side of the pedal. So do you want a pedal that is very... Stiff, for example, that does move a lot, that has a low amount of travel, like I have it. This will result in something has to give way as you increase the pressure, right? And if it's not the pedal, then it's probably the foot, the lag, or I'll just move a little in my seat. So depending on your seating situation, 
and um, depending what you desire there, you want to have a pedal that has low or high travel. What I cannot do, for example, is go with very high travel and produce a lot of force because you can see the angle of the pedal is getting tricky and I might just slip off the pedal plate there and can't really control my braking input anymore. So a very large amount of travel, depending on the pedal construction, might lead to the issue of the pedal getting very angled and then you're not pressing really in a nice angle onto that pedal plate and you might just slip uh, off on top of the plate there. So for me, I want rather low travel to not slip out the pedal, but also I feel most comfortable when fully relying on the forces only and not so much the travel to confuse me. If you want to have your braking visualized or compared to professional players, you can just go to our website popometer.io where you will find an easy way to record your telemetry data from ACC, iRacing, LMU, Automobilista, AC1, whatever you want and you can just plot your braking against the professional guys and see what you're doing differently or spot issues with your pedal for example now if you have further questions just leave a comment i'll make sure to have an eye on it if you like the video leave a like also maybe if you have a particular pedal that you like a lot also just put it in the comment share it for the other people what your sweet spot is in terms of force where this travel where this precision and let's talk about that and we'll hopefully see you sooner than two months between the videos bye